Well, I'll go ahead and get started. This feels loud. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for being here. Um, severe obesity in the emergency department, what you must know, no financial disclosures. I'm Mary McLean. I am an assistant program director at Advent Health East Orlando. Prior to that, I was up in uh, Yonkers, New York as an assistant program director and did my residency there, um, did my, my med school in Oregon. I've been kind of all over. Um, and uh, a little bit about me and sort of the, the I guess one of the impetuses behind this talk is that I have a personal history of obesity. About 15 years ago, I had massive weight loss and I feel that this puts me in a little bit of a unique position to be able to talk about this highly stig stigmatized topic from personal experience and also have some level of comfort in it because I don't feel as if I'm, you know, targeted with the same biases that I would be if I were still that same size. So, I, um, I, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to talk about, but I think that as the, um, the health issues that come along with obesity become worse and worse, particularly in our nation, we need to be talking about this and we are not talking about it. And, uh, you know, just case in point, I have submitted this talk for a few years in a row to lots and lots of national conferences. This is the first time that it's gotten accepted and I am absolutely thrilled. I think it's gonna take a couple of years to get some traction, but I did also get it accepted for a state talk. So I'm really thinking that we're headed in the right direction. And also I think that the media is embracing some of the, um, some of the you know, people who live in larger bodies um, and they're, putting out recommendations for how to communicate, the words to use, you know, what's PC, what's not PC, what might offend, and how to check your bias on this issue. So this is something that obviously with my own personal history, this is near and dear to my heart. It's something that I see in the emergency department and everybody sees in the emergency department on the medical side every single day. More than half of the US population right now is classified as either overweight or obese. And it has been getting worse, despite the fact that we now have the, you know, Ozempic and, and the Wagovi and we have bariatric surgeries that are found to be very effective. This problem exists and it's not going anywhere. Maybe it'll get a little better in the next few years, but it's something that we need to know how to treat medically and socially in the emergency department and in our daily lives. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit more about just like the very basics of why this matters before I get into objectives. Um, so like I said, obesity rate in the United States has, um, has increased across the board, nearly every single state. Um, this is the overall rate from the CDC website, 2022. Um, it's a, you know, obviously a little bit worse now. And it's not, um, I think that we have an issue thinking that this is a simple problem of calories in, calories expended. That's not the case. There is so much more wrapped up in the obesity epidemic. There are uh, race, ethnicity, socioeconomic um, considerations here. Um, there are obviously geography, there's genetics, there's physical ability, sleep routines, there's chronic illnesses and the medications that we take from. Did you know that beta blockers are a risk factor for increased body weight and actually have been found to cause it? Even beta blockers. So. A lot of the common medications, I mean, I could, there's a huge list of them too, like carbamazepine, there's tons of them, obviously steroids. Um, so even just the underlying unrelated medical conditions that people have may predispose them to uh, becoming obese. So it's, it's not a simple matter of just calories in and the amount that we exercise. There is so much more to unpack here, and I'm not gonna be able to talk about it all, but <laughs> I did want to mention some of those things. So, 
Um, there are some ED specific effects that I wanted to talk about. Um, so wait times have been found to be longer. Um, patients sit in the waiting room for longer, waiting to see a doctor um, uh, if they have an elevated BMI. Um, there's a little bit of a question about overall ED length of stay. It has been hypothesized numerous times in numerous studies that it increases the ED length of stay. There was one um, study back in 2016 that actually found no difference at all that was significant. They actually found um, a, a non-significant decrease in the ED length of stay for people who had an elevated BMI. There's also issues with overworkup, over-testing of people who have overweight and obesity. There's um, a decreased number of consults that we, um, that we call in the emergency department for our patients who have obesity. And there's also a decreased admission rate for patients who have obesity and another condition that is bringing them to the emergency department. So there are, um, there are really a lot of differences in the way that patients who present to the emergency department who happen to be obese are being treated and, and dis dispoed and everything. So it's, it's very important to be aware of this. And then of course there are some very well-known consequences, um, personal consequences of, uh, um, of obesity. So poor mental health, out health outcomes, reduced quality of life, um, and then it's associated with some of the leading causes of death, which I'm sure you're all aware. And you know, unfortunately, as I'll address a little bit later, um, you would think that doctors having a little more medical knowledge and a little bit more of like pathophysiology knowledge than the general population would be one of the less biased groups um, regarding obesity. And we are actually the second most biased of all the specific groups that have been studied. So it's, it's pretty shocking. And more often than not, we find ourselves just you know, providing the worst advice about how to actually become, become. I'm gonna really try if that keeps going, but I have like my hearing. Yeah. Attention, please. An emergency has been recorded. All occupants go to the nearest stairwell exit and walk down to your assigned reentry floor or main lobby. Do not use the elevators. Walk to the nearest stairway. Y'all gonna, we all, we're gonna go? We're gonna go? Okay, okay. Come back next year. I am gonna advocate for a 50 minute talk on this topic. Please come and visit next year and still fill out a form for evaluation. So thank you for coming. I really do appreciate y'all coming. Stairwell exit and walk down to your assignment.